Hi, it's Deborah Atkinson, host of the Flipping 50 podcast and the Flipping 50 TV show. And I've got a question from a reader who wrote in and asked me this, and I want to make sure that I clarify it. So the question was, can you distinguish or talk more about the difference between using glycogen for exercise or burning muscle for exercise? So for Patricia, here's the answer to that question. So really, it's one and the same. Glycogen is the kind of fuel from carbohydrates that you eat and digest that goes to the muscles and that's where it's stored. So it is always the energy that you use when you first begin an exercise. So if you're gonna do a really long, intense exercise, there may be a risk that you're gonna run out of glycogen, but for the most of us, the short duration exercise that we need to do in order to fit it into our lifestyle and the short duration exercise that you, if you're a midlife woman approaching 50 or on the other side, want to do to really give purpose to exercise and make it count and balance your hormones so you have optimal weight and optimal energy, we're not going to run out of glycogen. So we're going to use some of those stores and then we're going to, at our next meal, with just a little bit of carbohydrate, we're gonna replenish those stores. So I do want to address the other questions. So what might be confusing to you, if you're wondering what's the difference, we are always using muscles during exercise, whether it's cardiovascular or whether it's strength training, even yoga uses your muscles. And there's always a little bit of breakdown in the muscle tissue. The more strenuous or vigorous the exercise, the more breakdown there is. The more you reach fatigue when you're doing strength training, and I highly encourage you to reach fatigue, whether you're going heavy or you're going light, fatigue is the thing that is necessary for you to actually see results. So keep that in mind. That's another question altogether. But when we're talking cardio, fatigue might be breathlessness. At the end of an interval session that's say 30 seconds or 60 seconds, you want to be at a breathless rate. You feel like you can't really do any more. And that's the end of a successful interval. You want the recovery. That's where you should be. So if you've got more of that going on, that sends a muscle message. And there is a little micro tearing that goes on in muscle whenever it reaches overload. And overload is one of the very important principles to exercise. Now we don't mean that you have to be in pain. We don't mean that you have to sustain or be at risk for an injury, but overload means really reaching that last one you can do really well, really getting so out of breath that you couldn't go any longer during that interval but with another rest interval between, you can come right back to it. That's a healthy place to be and a good place to exercise. But even that, with healthy exercise, there's micro tearing going on. So sometimes the missing part in recovery and really getting the most out of exercise is the time between your exercise. When you rest and recover and really truly rest, Active rest is good, so if you do high intensity exercise, whether it's on your bike, whether it's running or swimming or boxing or rowing, whatever your choice is, in between recovery might look like gentler versions of that. It might be something like swimming that's easier on your joints and much more soothing as an activity. It might be walking outdoors with your dog without worrying about your heart rate or the time or the distance. Those are all recovery kinds of activities. And so is rest, literally. Getting a lot of good sleep, maybe getting a massage. If you can do that, I would highly recommend it. Or giving yourself a massage using tools like the foam roller or the stick that you actually can roll on different body parts or ask someone to roll on body parts that hold the tension. Here's a good one for women right there. Those kinds of things and the amount of calories. If you're not getting enough total calories, your body can't recover and repair as well. If you're not getting enough protein, that's the second part of nutrition, your body also 
can't recover and repair and rebuild those muscles. So protein definitely is directly related to muscle protein synthesis. Getting enough back into those muscles to A, hold on to them, to rebuild and repair them if you've exercised them enough to stress them and building a little bit more. If you've lost some lean muscle mass and you want to get it back, it is not too late. So I hope that helps answer your question and distinguish between glycogen and muscle and really what is used for fuel and how you recover optimally. Whether you are 50, 60, 70, or you're 20, those rules all apply. But as we're 50 and older, we have a little less wiggle room. We really have to be spot on with the exercise and the recovery, all three things. So until next time, I'll see you on the flip side.